Hey, how's awesome, it guys? In this tutorial, we'll learn how to manage your Google BigQuery dataset with BigQuery API in Python. All right, so BigQuery dataset is one of the most important concepts to master when you are working with BigQuery. A dataset is equivalent to a schema. Now for this tutorial, I will show you four different examples, how to list datasets, how to create a dataset, delete a dataset, and finally, we're going to learn how to uh, move tables from the data set to a different uh, data set using the data transfer service. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to create a plain Python script. Now, I'll start by importing the BigQuery module from Google.Cloud. I also import the BigQuery data transfer module, and that's going to be used to uh, move different data sets around. So, I create a class called Data Set Manager. Here, let me copy paste the code here. You can find the source code to uh, this class from the link in the description below. So inside this uh, dataset manager class, we have methods such as delete dataset, create dataset, list dataset, copy dataset, and, and that should be it. So four different uh, methods that we can easily use to manage our datasets. All right, so actually let's do this. I'll go over uh, each method individually uh, real quick. So when you are creating a dataset manager object, we need to provide a BigQuery client instance or BigQuery client object. Now for the delete dataset method, we have a parameter called dataset ID. So we can delete a dataset by providing a dataset name. And we'll pass the dataset name to the delete dataset method. Now noticing that from the client dot delete dataset method, we have an optional parameter called not found OK. So basically, uh, if you want to raise an error, when a data set is not available, then you can uh, set this uh, parameter value to false. And currently, I'm setting the default value to true, so you can always uh, update the source code based on your use case. Then we can move on to create data set method. Now, to use the uh, create data set method, we need to provide a data set ID and the default location is set to US. So if you are coming from a different country, and if you're not using uh, US as the uh, data set server, then you can uh, modify the location based on uh, your location. And inside the create data set method, so I'm creating a data set reference uh, by updating the data set location. And because I don't want to modify uh, this uh, data set object's existence or property, so I'm creating a brand new uh, data set using the client uh, create data set method. And I'll provide the data sets reference. And just in case, if the server is busy, I'm setting the uh, timeout period to 30 seconds. And I'll name the output data set underscore. Then I'm printing a very brief message uh, to give us the uh, data sets uh, summary. Then I'll return the data sets underscore object. And this one's going to be uh, list data sets. So we can use client.list data sets method to list all the data sets in our Google BigQuery project. And the last method, copy data set, is going to be the most, I, I won't say complicated, but just because we'll be using a different service to perform the uh, data set migration, which I'll demo in a second. But this one, uh, I guess, is the most complex method out of the uh, four methods. All right, so from the copy data set method, we need to provide the source project ID, uh, source data set ID, destination project, and destination data set. And we'll create a transfer service. We need to give the service request a name. And that's where this uh, display name uh, parameters come from. And if you have additional questions, you can always go to the documentation, which I have the link right here. All right, so let's look at how the uh, copy dataset uh, method is uh, created. So first, I'm creating a dataset transfer service client object. And I'll name the object transfer client. Then I'll create my transfer config object and I'll name the object transfer config. So basically inside the transfer config uh, class, this is where we're going to provide the uh, source project, source data set ID, destination project, and destination data set. And from the transfer config object, we can run the create transfer config method to make the API code to perform the data set migration. Now let me go ahead and create the class and import the uh, modules. All 
Now let's go to the button. So first I need to construct my big client object. Okay, let me insert a node. So construct bigquery client object. So I'm creating my bigquery client object using bigquery.client. And I'm named the uh, object as client. Then I'll create my data set manager object and pass in the client object. And I'll name the output as data set manager. Now we'll start with something easy, which is to uh, list all the data sets in a project. So right now my client object is referencing my SQL for BigQuery project. So this is my default project. Now if I simply run line 58, oh, I forgot to create my client object in data set manager. All right, so if I run line 58 and if I print dataset list. And that's going to return all the datasets that I currently have available under my SQL for BigQuery project. So if I look at my list, I have uh, six datasets. And for my uh, print statement, I also have six datasets returned. Now I want to skip to example three, which is to delete a dataset. And because I noticed that uh, in my SQL for BigQuery project, my trash one data set uh, is not deleted. So here, I'm creating my data set's address that point to the trash one data set. So if I run line 65, and if I print data set name, and it's going to be uh, your project name, period, followed by the data set's ID, trash one. Now I can run line 66 to delete the trash one data set. If I go ahead and refresh my page, now I'm getting this message not found, followed by a uh, data set SQL for BigQuery trash one. And to recreate the trash one data set, so I'll create my uh, trash one data set's address, followed by referencing the data set manager, then using the create data set method and providing the data set's name. So if I go ahead and run these two lines, and that should recreate my trash one data set. So if I uh, look at my BigQuery console, uh, just give it a second. And here's the uh, trash one data set that got recreated. Now for the last example, and I think this is going to be very uh, useful for many uh, companies if you intend to uh, migrate tables from one data set to another. And once we create data transfer service, we are not limiting to a single project. So if you want to migrate a data set from one project to another project, then uh, you can use data transfer service to uh, perform the task as well. Now let's look at an example. So here I have four variables created, source project, source data set, destination project, and destination data set. So basically I want to move my tables under my demo data set to my trash one data set. And currently trash one data set does not have any table available. So I can simply reference data set manager dot copy data set. And I'll provide all the uh, relevant information such as uh, source project, source data set, destination project, destination data set, and the uh, name that I want to assign to the transfer request. And I'll name the uh, transfer request data set transfer demo one. Now, if I go ahead and run this code block, and that's going to uh, create a data transfer request. Now, if I refresh the page, And if I look at my trash one data set, and I think still, uh, let, me, let me see. So on the left hand side, if you go to data transfers, so you should see all the uh, requests that you're making. So here I'm getting an error. Let's take a look. Right, so saying that demo is not found. Now let's go back. 
All right, so it's going to be a pretty. Oh, okay, I know why. Because D is uppercase, and just notice that uh, everything is case sensitive. Sorry, I need to run this request again. Now, if I go to the transfers, now it's still uh, in the queue. So let me refresh the page again. And still uh, performing the data transfer request. All right, so let me go ahead and delete this uh, request. All right, so let's do this. I think uh, the task should be complete by now. Okay, so it uh, looks like the task is complete. It's just that uh, the status is not updated. Now, if we look at trash run, and if I click on SQL table preview, and I can see that all the records of this uh, SQL table is now migrated to uh, trash run SQL table. And same thing with this uh, data analysis table. So one thing I forgot to go over is uh, before you can use BigQuery data transfer service, we need to enable the API first. And to enable the API, first you want to navigate to console.cloud.google.com. On the left-hand side, you want to click on navigation menu, then click on APIs and services library. Now in the search bar, you want to search for BigQuery, Data Transfer API. And click on BigQuery Data Transfer API. And just make sure that the Data Transfer API service is enabled. All right, so let's go back to uh, our Python script. I want to show you another example regarding data migration. Now, let's say I want to transfer my, here, let's go back to my SQL workplace. Now, let's say I want to migrate my tables under my JJ data set. I have three tables. And just remember that view does not get migrated to a, a data set. So I want to transfer these three tables under my JJ data set to my Google Cloud Demo project under this uh, Cloud Demo data set. Now, all I need to do here is I can simply copy paste a very similar script. And let me come out uh, these five lines. Now, instead of uh, using the same project, I updated my destination project ID and the destination data set. Now, if I go ahead and run this code block, let me print the response object. Yeah, so I remember uh, the copy data set does not return any, uh, anything back. It simply prints a message. And to get the uh, request information, I have to use a different API. But at this point, I don't want to do that yet. So I can simply go to data transfer service and check the data transfer service request status. All right, so let me go back to my Google Cloud Demo project. Now, if I expand my Google Cloud Demo project, which is this uh, Noble Airport 243704 project, expand Cloud Demo data set, and here are the three tables for my GJ data set. So this is going to be everything I'm going to cover in this video. And hopefully you guys found this video useful. And feel free to post your question or your feedback in the comment section below. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.